Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Welcome to the Forsaken Westerns. Up next, we've got an episode of an anthology series, and the star is a very well-known Western TV actor. He starred with Robert Fuller in the wonderful Western series Laramie. He starred as Slim Sherman. Of course, I'm speaking of the great John Smith. John also co-starred with George Montgomery in 26 episodes of Cimarron City. In this episode, John's character goes through quite the metamorphosis. The title of this TV episode is Paper Gunman, and it's from 1955. Sit back, relax, kick your boots up, and enjoy this, and we'll see you after the show. Summer, 1871. The heat puffed in heavy with dust off the Colorado wastelands. The town of Los Animas gave up to it. Even Clay Allison being in town didn't make a stir. His guns were tucked under his frock coat. Right now, Clay was a checker playing man. Sudden rain broke the heat, and all over the Colorado Territory, most talk got started with how cool it was for July. It got started that way, but downstate in Washita, like every place else, had turned to talk about Clay Allison. You know what I heard? I heard in Las Vegas, a doc pulled the wrong two to Clay's, and Clay went right back and pulled him the doc's whole mouthful. A fabrication, gentlemen. Uh, I heard it. Designed to further the myth. Maybe. As a newspaper man, I could acquaint you with endless fables, which I have no doubt not only caused your jaws to drop, but incited you to buy newspapers as well. Since here, Clay Allison killed his number 11. I see that's what he did. Uh, me too. Four. All right, maybe five. The rest, I'd lay odds, were no more than chance corpses found in deserted shacks. Shacks which lately housed a dark-eyed maiden and a friend who returned unexpectedly. Know your trouble, Thornton? Each of there was gunplay. You weren't around. <laughs> oh, that's true. That is very true, my friend. Yes, news has eluded me. Wherever I go, town seems suddenly to exude a saintliness and a gentle light. Gunplay that our cousins in the East hunger for is always for me just beyond the mountains in the next town down the river. Clay Allison's a hero. Clay Allison is a misfit. Mr. Um, Willie McGill. Willie. Well, Willie, friend Allison is a tortured soul. His fame has been forced upon him. It causes him to kill and be hunted and drift through life. A civilization or a faster killer catches up with him. Let me have another drink. Uh, ain't nobody faster than Clay. Civilization, Willie. History, history that we are making, you and I, just by being here in this new, this new wide world. Can't tolerate the Clay Allison. I still say Clay Allison's a hero. He's manufactured. He's a newspaper headline. Something that we use to cover our embarrassment that we're doing something mighty big here. We're building a new country. Still, ain't nobody here wouldn't like to be half of what he is. And you too, Willie? Sure. Hmm. A drink for my friend. Gee, thanks. Same? Yeah. What do you do, Willie? Oh, not much. I work, chewing, sweeping, as long as the job lasts. Hmm. It's kind of difficult for you holding on to a job, isn't it? Yeah, I can't seem to please people. <laughs> yeah. And I'm having difficulty finding news. We need each other, Willie. We need each other. Hello there, Willie. Well, hi, Mr. Thornton. I uh, brought you a few things. Why'd you do that? Because I like you. Oh, we're going to get along fine. Hey, a frock coat. Mine? Yours. Yours. Try it on, Mr. McGill. Mm -hmm. How do I look? Well, walk around in it. Get the feel and the hug of it around your shoulders. Go ahead, Willie, do it. Mm 
Well, not like that, Willie, with a strut. With pride and arrogance and refinement, but easy. Now, you're wearing a $50 frock coat, so you let me know it. Go ahead, do it. Willie, do you know what I'm talking about? I, I think so, Mr. Thornton. The walk of the gunslinger, Willie. It's a stylish walk, an animal walk, a killer walk. Now, Clay Ellison wears a frock coat just like yours. You show me that you're as much man as Clay Allison is. Oh, show me. Gunslinger. You are a gunslinger. Now, taste it in your marrow. Let your blood cool with the feel of it. Make it beautiful to watch. I need a gun. Let's get into you, Willie. Oh, you must be Mrs. McGill. I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance. Get on with what you need to do, Cora. Where'd you get the coat? I gave it to him. Uh, Jill Thornton, newspaper reporter out of Denver. I met Mr. McGill in town. We struck up a conversation, found many an affinity between us. Well, why'd you give him the coat? Cora. Spur to his pride. Why, it's a cloak for his dignity. That's the way it is, Cora. It's a handsome coat. He, he looks fine in it. Yes. And I've got something else for you. A gun. It was in Roswell, Willie, that Clay Allison began his career. At a gaming table of a small saloon, a grifter cheated on Clay. Clay drew his gun like a quick flash of summer lightning and shot up that game. And that was the beginning, Willie. It was the beginning of the tempest that is now Clay Allison. There's a card game in town tonight, Willie. Could you do it? Oh, this gun feels nice. Could you do what Clay Allison did? Yes. Yes, I could. Mrs. McGill. Look at him. Look at your husband. Molly, what are you doing with... Now, you be careful with that gun. Get on with your clothes hanging, Cora. I'm going into town. You coming, Thornton? I'm coming, Will. You need your basket, sonny. Is it those fancy sleeves getting away with it? Say, you wearing garters under that pretty. Well, I'm warning you, Lou. Warning me, Willie? About what? I'm just warning you. Deal the cards. Jackpot. And he's one blue. Gents, it's jackpot. Willie calls for a big blue one in the middle. What's it, you boy? Doodled up all of a sudden? Card play all of a sudden? Cocky real soon. I open. What'd you do then, Lou? Son. What'd you do then? What car did you palm from the top of your boots? Son, something's made you crazy. You better go home. Oh, I've seen you do it, Lou. What happens? What did they do to you? They spanked me. What? Like I was a ten-year-old. Why? Like I was a ten-year-old. Oh, Willie. Look at me. 
I uh, brought back your gun. Oh, I'd like to kill you. I'd like to kill every one of you. All you got out of it was a dirty face, wasn't it, Willie? Well, looks like we made a tactical error. What's he talking about? Well, it's his fault, all of it. But I'm glad to see that you can get angry, Willie. That's going to help. What do you want? What do you want with Willie, anyhow? You got me shamed. This town knows you too well, Willie. They didn't take you seriously. Help me, Willie. What's he want? All right, tell her. Get out of here. Mrs. McGill, your husband senses a certain lack within himself, a certain stature. I can give it to him. Willie... At the moment, your husband feels only hurt and anger. Yes. But in another town, Willie, you can have that hurt and anger going for you. You can take it out on whoever you want. You leave us alone. Willie, you can step up to any man that you want and you can take it out on him. Mr. Thornton? In another town. Sure, Willie. In another town. They wouldn't know me. It would be different. They wouldn't start laughing right away before anything. Why, sure, Willie. You... You going away? Why? Because I got to. Indeed you do. Now, uh, kiss your wife goodbye. He is a killer without compassion and yet without anger. He's of classic mold. There he is now. Willie McGill. How do you do, Mr. McGill? Would you care to... Whatever your pleasure, sir. Whiskey. What are you going to do, sir? I'm going to buy your killer a drink. I warn you, sir. Move gently. Mr. McGill, I'd like to buy you a drink. Been hearing a lot of talk about you. Talk? Yeah. Big talk. If it's true, like he says, it buys you a drink. Buy it. I buy. Well, here's to the bad man he says you are. To the killer. He said it, now you say it. He won't say it, lady. You say it. Killer. Don't push it, Ray. Any more pushers? You did it, Willie. You did it. It was easy. You step up to a man who don't know you. You push him hard enough, he gets scared. He gets real small. And all the time, you're growing. My friend, I'm in need of a telegraph office. I have a story to file on Willie McGill, the Colfax Kid. The Colfax Kid? That's right, Willie. A legend just got started. Down the southern rim of New Mexico into Arizona, the legend grew. Where the Colfax kid moved, every unexplained killing was credited to him. Ten notches to his gun. But he had yet to fire his first shot. Look at this. Colfax kid terrorizes Taos. Eyewitness account by Joe Thornton. <laughs> well, there's the one that did it, Willie boy. With this did I win adulation, flattery, and a raise. <laughs> a raise, because I made you the terror of a village of squaws and old men and lonely drunkards. <laughs> what are you laughing at? 
Uh, we've a lot to laugh about, you and I, Willie Boy, haven't we? I did what it says there in the paper. I cut that town loose. That's right, you did. I had that town spinning and crawling in dirt, didn't I? Well, didn't I? Yeah. Yes, you did. That give you cause to laugh at me. They was facing dirt when I walked out of Taos. Yeah, they were frightened of you, Willie. Have you forgotten why? Yeah. I forgot. Because I created you, Willie. I picked you up in your dirty backyard and I shaped you into the mirror of a man. I whistle and the image of you will shatter like so much cheap glass. That's not why. There's reason people act the way they do when I come around. I'd kill them if they didn't. And they know it. Willie. Same as I'd kill you if you didn't. Sure, you picked me up out of dirt. But what were you? What were you till you found me? I was nothing. I was a newspaper man looking for a story. That's right. You were nothing. Says here, Clay Allison's been seen in Washington. What about it? You sure forgot. Washita is my hometown. I didn't forget, Willie. And Clay Allison's there. He's about as big a killer as there is. You know? A lot bigger than you, Willie. More truth in him. You stay here. Nobody's getting on here. Nobody's going to California. We're going the other way. To Washita. You mean because Clay Allison's there? That's right. And you want to face him? There's one thing I've learned these months, Thornton. You step up to a man, you tell him he's an inch away from dying, and he goes small. That goes for anybody. Clay Allison. Willie? Yeah. I, uh, underestimated you. Mr. Allison, you heard of Willie McGill. You heard of the Colfax kid. Hello, Willie. Here you're the Colfax kid now. Scare you, Lou? What about it, Lou? Clay Allison? That's right. They call me. Willie. I just heard. How are you? Willie. You mind the question? No, I don't mind. Tell me true. How many men you've killed? Well, killing's a kind of special thing, Willie. There ain't no joy in it. Worse than that is remembering it. You a drinking man? How many? Seven? Eight? Twenty? You gotta know, huh? What would happen... What would happen, Clay? A man stood up to you? Faced you? I'm not afraid of your man? Would you have the belly for it? You figuring on spending this evening finding out? What if I would? How old are you, Willie? What if I would? Tell me, what do you want? Try it. You walk in here, no reason at all. What is it, you want the honor to kill me, is that it? Scared yellow. Look, Willie, let's put it this way. Odds are you still have some living to do. Don't press it. How'd you get all those cripples? In the back, through a window? Hey, Willie. Killing's got to be done tonight, don't it? I came looking for you, Clay. Yeah? Well, how'd it be if, uh, 
If you and me had a bite to eat. Eat? Sure. You seem set on one of us dying. Well, let him go on a full stomach. No sense dying hungry. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a hungry man, Willie. Uh, barkeep. Uh, my friend and I had thank you kindly to set us up a table. Steaks, potatoes, beans, coffee. Coming right up. The, uh, the winner will pay. Hey, Willie. Mrs. McGill, with duties to perform and time at my heels. Right off. First thing I asked for you. Why? What have you and I to say to each other? Tell me the things you said to Willie. Tell me what you said that, that made him want to die. Mrs. McGill... Well, Willie never did want very much. Me sometimes. And sudden you come to him and, and he wants everything there is. How'd you do that? I only gave voice to a dream Willie had. I know who you are. And I know what you are. And I know why I wanted to talk to you. I want you to talk to me like you talked to Willie. I want you to say the words you said to Willie. I'll hold my face real close, real close, and, and you can whisper it in my ear. Do it, do it. Make me die. Say the word that'll make me die, too. No. No. Today, in Rushida, 
Clay Allison. Cold poise, shot down, his 12th man. Victim of the notorious killer is none other than Willie McGill, the erstwhile Colfax kid. It was a meeting commanded by destiny and shaped in the The story appeared in the Denver Herald. The legend of the Colfax kid lasted only a little while. Then the dust drifted in, covered his resting place. Willie was forgotten. It happened that way, moving west. The material for Frontier is taken from official archives, documents, diaries, and records. In some cases, names of people and places have been changed. The facts remain. Tonight's story is such a story. How fantastic to see John in this very rare production. John was also in many films, including films with John Wayne and Gary Cooper. And, and what a wonderful cast this show has with, with uh, wonderful actors in early in their careers, like James Westerfield, Leo Gordon, Dabs Greer, Carol Thurston, King Donovan, and several others. Oh, and, and TV's Jim Bowie, Scott Forbes. Thank you for joining us for the Forsaken Westerns. We hope you'll join us again here next time. My name is Bob Terry. Have a great day. <laughs>